Welcome back to Bilingual Finance Fridays. This is season two. We are happy to be back with this culturally relevant, trauma-informed education on finances for the purpose of empowering our community to have a healthy financial life. Uh, buenas tardes, bienvenidos nuevamente a Viernes Son para las Finanzas, a uh, temporada 2. Nuevamente estamos aquí todos para hablarles de cosas relevantes como son finanzas para nuestra comunidad y para este de, de una forma donde donde entendemos la sensibilidad de traumas este que puedan estar pasando. Nuevamente mi nombre es Diana, como Diana como me conocen y soy consejera financiera y agente de bienes raíces. Sí, mi nombre es Cristina Trujillo. My name is Cristina Trujillo, and I am the CEO and founder of Reem Media. Through our uh, production company, we are able to have this um, community space and in the house uh, of our production partners, Berkeley Community Media. So shout out to them. We're actually at their studios today. I am so pleased to come to come back today, to come back for the season two. We have a very special guest with us today, Ms. Tony Michaels. She is an attorney specializing, providing California state planning and probate services. Ahora, hoy día, tenemos una... Uh, una invitada muy especial, una abogada que especializa en, en este plan, planificación de uh, patrimonial. Sí. And, y, y ella pues tiene mucha noción. Ella es graduada de Yale Law School. So Tony Michaels is actually very well informed. She's here. We, we brought literally, we're, we're here with the best of the best of attorneys. She comes from Yale Law School. And I would, we would love for you to get to, to know her a little bit before we jump right into this heavy uh, subject matter. Miss Tony Michaels, thank you so much. Welcome to Bilingual Finance of Fridays. So tell our audience, who is Miss Tony Michaels? <laughs> um, well, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be with you and your audience today. Um, well, I am, um, I am, I guess the salient details are I'm, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm an attorney in Southern California. I live in the LA area. Um, and I'll share with you that my relationship to and my passion for talking about estate planning um, is really personal. I had a lot of experiences over the past few years where I was helping to care for family members, some elderly and some not. Um, some had estate planning documents in place, which really allowed me to get them the care they needed, and some didn't. And I um, understand on a very personal level how important this kind of planning is. And so I love every opportunity to tell other people about it because really everybody should have some sort of estate plan in place. Thank you so much. That is so important because we both also have a uh, personal understanding of what that is, and, you know, not having an estate planning, what that has meant uh, for, you know, our loved ones. And so we can absolutely relate to that. So when I heard, and I'm going to be very honest, when I heard estate planning, I thought that it only applied for to people that own property, big property, like a home, right? And so I, Tony, please, um, you know, let me, let us know uh, whether or not that is an actual thing. Like, is it only for home, you know, home owners or property owners or who does, what is estate planning and like, who does it, um, who can benefit from it? Okay. So the answer is um, no, <laughs> it is not just for the very wealthy. Um, and let me take a second and just qualify everything I say by telling you that my goal is really to share some basic information to help everybody start to think about their own estate plans. Um, but I obviously in this forum cannot give any sort of personalized legal advice. And I highly recommend that you seek the assistance of an estate planning attorney who can talk about your particular circumstances and any tax or other consequences that may apply to you. Um, but now let, let's dig in. Um, just the word estate, I think, is intimidating. We think of a mansion with, you know, extensive grounds, and for sure there's a butler. Um, but when we're talking about estate planning, the word estate really just means the assets a person has when they die. So I have an estate, you have an estate, everybody has an estate. They may be varying sizes, um, but we all could do some planning so that there's a smooth transition when we pass. Um, 
So estate planning, though, encompasses more than just thinking about who gets what when we've passed away. Um, one big goal of estate planning is to make a plan of who will be a decision maker for you if the time ever comes when you can't make decisions for yourself. And we call this being incapacitated. And so you could think of an elderly person who maybe has Alzheimer's and cannot, cannot make decisions, um, either medical or financial decisions for himself or herself anymore. But it could even be a young person who is in an accident, for example, and can't manage their own affairs for a period of time. So a big goal is to appoint a, a person, a trusted person who would be your decision maker, uh, both for medical decisions and for healthcare decisions. Um, another goal, if you have children, a really important goal is to name a guardian in the event that you pass away and the child or children's other parent also has passed away. Um, the guardian is the person who would have day-to-day -day care of the child or the children in that event. Um, and then the goal we're more familiar with is planning for a smooth transition after, after we passed away. And so that includes leaving really clear instructions, um, who's going to be in charge of managing the property, who's going to get the property. We, we call the people who get the property the beneficiaries. Um, but we also want to try, um, if probate might be on the horizon in terms of the value of our assets, a, a uh, an estate planning goal is to try to help your loved ones avoid the court probate process. And depending on the type and the value of, of the assets you have, tax planning to try to make sure that your loved ones are going to have the most efficient tax outcomes um, is also part of estate planning. Wow, that, that's definitely a, um, definitely really good information. We appreciate it. I do want to mention in Spanish very quickly, I want to translate what uh, Tony mentioned, que bueno, aquí está compartiendo información muy importante. Uh, Tony, pueden verlo aquí en, el, en los subtitles que estamos poniendo. Pero lo importante es que sepan que uh, ella sí es abogada, pero hoy día está compartiendo información básica, ¿verdad? Y ahorita los dio un, unos ejemplos um, de lo que que significa esta planificación, ¿verdad, yeah. Diana? Que, yeah. uh -huh. Sí, so, básicamente la planificación patrimonial. Y ella está dejando saber que no es solamente para una persona que tiene una, una uh, casa. Es para, tenemos otras cosas, ¿verdad? Tenemos este, coches o otras cosas que, que nosotros este, uh, somos dueños de ellas. Y, y más que nada, eh, el, la planificación que estamos hablando no solamente es cuando fallecemos, que puede ser que a veces es un poco tabú en nuestra cultura, pero también, ¿quién hiciera decisiones por mí si estoy uh, discapacitada? ¿Qué pasara si tienen hijos y uh, uh, a quién les dieran este, la, 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 los derechos legales para, para cuidar a los niños? Este, y, no, y a veces pensamos, como ella dijo, Tony, que, o oh, pensamos a veces que es nada más cuando, para la vejez, ¿verdad? Pero una persona joven, como ella mencionó, también desafortunadamente a veces tienen accidentes. Entonces, ¿quién, quién tomara decisiones mientras que yo me estoy recuperando, si es verdad, en el de ese accidente? Y ya la que todos conocemos de esa planificación es pues cuando ya no vamos a estar, ¿verdad? ¿Quién se va a quedar con mis cosas? Este, uh, y hacer este proceso más fácil para nuestros seres queridos. Como dijo ella, si no hay este, este papel, se va a ir a las cortes y ellas van a decidir cómo, cómo se va a distribuir los bienes, cuáles son este, lo que van a pagar de... Uh, de impuestos, de las propiedades, o sea, todo eso lo, lo van a decidir ellos porque este, no teníamos un papel de planificación del patrimonio. So, la palabra patrimonio son cosas que nosotros somos dueños. Sí. Sí. Muchas gracias. Y algo que comenzó también y con, compartió Tony, bien sinceramente, que ella, com, ella practica... Um, eh, la, la, la ley en esto es porque ella tiene personalmente, tiene experiencia en cuidar a sus seres queridos y soy, ella sabe la importancia y qué importante es estar preparar, preparados, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. So, um, with that, as a real estate agent, um, Diana, what, what, what is a really good um, question that you believe, you know, that your clients may have asked you or maybe a myth or something that we can ask Tony so that we can help to clarify. I think one of the big things, Tony, that people sometimes ask is, um, 
well, can I, is it better for me to add my child to, you know, once they turn 18 into the title of the, of, of, of my properties, or I should just make a trust or a will or a state, which is obviously more legal questions, right? But maybe in your opinion or maybe your experience, what do you think is best when it comes to, a lot of parents are concerned of, yeah, adding these 18 year olds to like, let's say the title of a property and they're still very young. They're still considered even teenagers. What is the best way to protect the assets um, for the family as a whole and be able to like know that these assets are gonna go to their kids or be Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Um, I hear um, your question makes me think about three considerations a family might have, right? One is um, whether the child is, or the young adult maybe is able to, to manage the property now or they, they want another person to help them manage. Um, that's one consideration. And there are some tax implications also, and then there's some probate Im implications in the question you asked. So um, a house, uh, generally in uh, houses in California are gonna be valuable enough that they're going to require uh, a probate um, court proceeding um, in order for title to be passed to whoever the beneficiary is. And so um, where people are concerned about that and want to, and we can talk in a minute about the, the drawbacks to probate, but where people want to avoid probate and they own real property, sometimes a trust starts to look like a really good option because uh, property owned in a trust does not go through probate. And so um, one of the reasons people sometimes talk about buying a house and putting it right away in a trust is that, again, the house is, is likely to be of such significant value that it would otherwise require a probate proceeding when the, the primary owners have passed away. Um, so in, ter in terms of the probate, if we're thinking just about probate to answer your question, um, a, a trust seems like a really good tool to use in that circumstance. Um, uh, if we're thinking about taxes, um, then I think a will or a trust is a better tool than just putting the, the child on the, the title right now. Because if you inherit property when somebody has passed away and left it to you, you get what's called stepped up basis, which means, I'm going to try to simplify this for your viewers very much. I don't want their, their eyes glazing over. But um, when you go to sell a house, you might have to pay tax. Um, it's called capital gains tax on the gain. And the gain is calculated as the difference between the basis. Think about that generally as being what you bought the house for and then what you're gonna sell the house for. And whatever that difference is, is the gain. Well, when you inherit property, you get to claim as your basis, whatever the value was on the date that the person who left it to you died. So if, if, you, if that's true, then if I inherit property today, I get today's value as my basis. And so if I sell the property anywhere close in time to today, I'm probably not going to have any gain, right? Because it's probably going to be approximately the same value. Um, and that is a really big tax benefit that you only get if you inherit property rather than your, your parent putting you on title to the house now. Um, other considerations, though, could be... Um, I talked about you know whether the the person is old enough to kind of manage the property. Some parents, many parents, don't want to give up ownership of their property until they have passed. And so, for some people, the idea of putting their child on the title right now um, feels very very scary, right? If you give someone a co ownership interest, that that property is is potentially subject to, um, you know, their debts or liens they could place on the house. And so that is that is quite a, a big responsibility to give to someone else. And a lot of people don't feel comfortable giving that away before they've passed away. And also if it's a young child, um, there's sometimes also a concern about a young person needing help to manage property before they can really, um, you know, have, have the full responsibility of the property themselves. And that's another reason why trust can become really attractive because either creating a trust um, when you die in your will or having what's called a revocable trust that exists now and continues after you pass. Um, it's a way to have someone called a trustee manage property on behalf of your child until they reach whatever age it is that you think they should own it outright. Can you take the trust for us? 
Sure. Um, so a trust is another one of those very, I think, intimidating terms that's, that's often misunderstood. Um, a trust is really just a legal tool. It's a way of owning property where you authorize uh, one person called the trustee to hold legal title on behalf of other people, um, either the trustors, the people who create the trust, or ultimately the beneficiaries. Um, and let me break it down a little bit and tell you what it actually is, because I, I trust the whole concept of a trust I find is very scary to people. Um, but so a trust is, uh, is consists of really two parts, the way I think of it. Part one is just uh, pieces of paper. It's a document, maybe a 30 page document that lays out um, who's forming the trust. And so if you're forming the trust, that would be you, your name would be in there and you'd be called the trustor. And it, it says who's going to manage the trust assets. And if you're forming a revocable trust during your life, that's going to be you too. Um, more than likely, you're going to be managing your own assets until you either become inca incapacitated or pass away. Um, and the trust is also going to spell out who the beneficiaries are going to be when you pass away. Those beneficiaries have no rights to anything in your trust until you've passed away. So you can spend your money or save the money, but you don't have to consider the beneficiaries when you're making your financial decisions. Um, and the trust is also going to just spell out the rules for how the trust funds are going to be managed. And um, generally speaking, during your lifetime, your money is your money and you have full access to it. Um, legal title is held by the trust. So instead of the bank account being owned by Tony Michaels, the bank account is owned by the Tony Michaels Trust. But Tony Michaels is the trustee of that trust and can make, you know, whatever decisions she, she wants to make. Um, and so the, the second part of the trust, I think that's also really important, is the assets you put in it. So you can have a trust document, but that do document is only going to control assets that are owned by the trust. So if you forget to go to the bank and tell them you want to move your, your checking account to a trust account, if you forget to execute a, a new deed for your house, transferring it from ownership in your name to ownership um, by the trust, then, then the trust won't control those documents. But any, any assets that the trust does control um, are going to pass free of probate, um, which is a very uh, nice benefit to having a trust. Awesome. And how would you explain it? What, what Tony just mentioned right now, how would you explain it um, maybe to, to your clients that do have um, maybe some, you know, misconcep misconceptions or maybe, you know, the, the superstition of like, no, I, I can't even enter into it. I can't think about that. How, you know, I think yeah. just like you said, Tony, I think really putting the different options in front of them. You know, like, this is what a state is, this is what a trust does, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, whatever you add into the trust, that's what's gonna, you know, that's what can be passed down with that probate, which, and, and defining probate for them, you know, court, like the whole process of court, the how long it is, you know? So I feel like for them to really understand the whole perspective, I think will make them think about it. Okay. Because it is a, a lot, um, it, it is taboo sometimes to talk about estate planning and I will not pass. Like people don't like to talk about it sometimes. So I think kind of like putting it into this perspective where it's like, you know, for our loved ones, right? Yes. It, it's yeah. not for us, it's for the, for, you know, if we love someone who, who you, you know, who do you, you know, even if it's charity, even if it's, you know, but just knowing that it's, it's I think it's the kind, you know, it's, a, it's something that has to do a lot with, the, our loved ones more than ourselves. I do yeah. believe in that, you know, sí. uh, when it comes to passing on the property, you know. Sí, es muy importante. So lo que explicó Tony es una her herramienta. Y esta her herramienta es muy importante. Um, y, pero también, ¿cómo, ¿cómo lo pudieras explicar para um, uh, tus, pa tus uh, clientes, verdad? Porque es una herramienta que todos deberíamos tener, pero ¿qué es la manera como más simple que lo podemos uh, entender? Um, como dijo Tony, ella lo puso en perspectiva de esto es lo que es la, la planificación, uh -huh. eso es lo, um, um, este, las opciones que tenemos nosotros para poder uh, dejar las, las cosas y pasarlas a los, a los jóvenes, porque a veces, como ella dijo, muchas veces las personas dicen, bueno, yo no quiero darles ahorita mis propiedad, propiedades. Entonces, ¿qué son las cosas que podemos hacer ahorita con las opciones? Para que tal vez, pues, no se las damos ahorita, pero está en un documento legal 
para cuando ya no estemos aquí, ¿verdad? Y no solo eso, pero ella habló de incapacidad, de quién hiciera esas decisiones de médico, de, de, de doctor, de mí, si no tengo esa, esa capacidad. Entonces, saber que hay otras opciones de, para que si, si, si fallecemos, ¿verdad? No se vayan a, directamente a la corte, pero que se vayan a los, a los, a los muchachos. Uh -huh. um, pero ya cuando no estemos, para que no tengan esa paz mental de, de decir, ok, yo voy a estar en mi casa hasta que yo esté aquí y todo, yo puedo controlar todas mis finanzas hasta que yo ya no esté aquí. Allí está el documento legal para que se para que se pase a, a mis hijos, que eso crea lo que hemos hecho tú y yo, a Cristina, la, este, el, este, tener este, a, a, este, a cosas y pasarlas a generaciones, ¿verdad? Como es este nuestro patrimonio, pasarlo a, a las siguientes generaciones para que ellos puedan crear y hacer decisiones y tener esa, esa seguridad económica que siempre hablamos. Sí, eso es lo que en, en inglés se llama... Um, intergenerational wealth building, mm -hmm. see, yeah. uh, generational wealth building. So Tony, um, what we're talking about today, how does it benefit or how can it help us to con continue? Say, you know, we, we've done well in life and we want to continue building wealth through generations. How, how, is, how does, um, you know, estate planning and having a trust, how does that help to create intergenerational wealth? Sure. Well, uh, generally, um, anytime we're talking about passing on um, our assets when we die, it has the potential to create intergenerational wealth. We think generally people are passing on to the generation below them, to their children. Um, and so these tools allow you to make sure it goes to the people that you want um, and also in a way that... Um, that you desire, right? It, you can create situations where um, money or assets are held until and invested um, on behalf of the beneficiaries until they reach a certain age. Um, and you can spread it to kind of different family members too. Um, you can leave to, to children, but also you can leave to grandchildren. And um, you can create, you know, special trust that would be just for, say, education. Um, and so you have a lot of flexibility with these tools to really send your, your assets, distribute your assets um, based on, on your priorities and the people who are important to you. Um, I, I think it might be really helpful to talk um, a little bit about Uh, what happens if you don't do estate planning? <laughs> That might be the best way to have people understand why it's so important. And so um, let me just take everybody through really briefly the ways that your assets pass, right? And so we have different kind of assets. We have assets we might not even think of as assets. Um, so let me run through them quickly. Um, so if a person dies and we're looking to see Who, who, who gets their assets, first we look at anything that the person owned um, as, as a joint tenant. Or um, if the person is married, maybe they owned something as community property with a right of survivorship. And so you may be aware that if you own something as a joint tenant, if you pass away, then by simple operation of the law, the other joint tenant owns whatever the property was 100%. Um, and so the, nobody has to go to court. We don't need to look at your will. It's that's all that happens. The, the remaining joint tenant has to file a little bit of paperwork um, and then they own it. So any property that you own that way, um, that's how it's already set to be distributed regardless of what you put in a will. Um, the next group of property that um, we should think about is anything where you have, have uh, given a beneficiary designation. And so you can think about life insurance in this category. You can think about retirement plans. You can think about um, bank accounts or investment accounts that have a transfer on death or a pay on death beneficiary. And so you can almost think of these as contracts with the financial institution. And so when, you know, God forbid you pass away, 
they're going to just pay out the beneficiary. The beneficiary will need to step forward, maybe have a copy of your death certificate and fill out a little paperwork. And then we would expect the, the check to be in the mail as it were. Um, so again, we don't, we don't need to look at your will or your trust if you have one, there's no probate. This is just, you know, a, 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 really the only people involved are the financial company and the beneficiary. Um, and so then uh, the, the next type of property you might have is actually California allows a special kind of deed called a revocable transfer on death deed. It's fairly new. And there's a bill pending now to see how much longer it's going to be allowed in the state. But it's a deed that actually allows you to name a beneficiary for your house. So you, I might own my house as, as Tony Michaels, but I could execute this deed to make clear that when, when I die, you, Christina, inherit my house. Um, there are some uh, restrictions and drawbacks of using this. It is not a perfect estate planning tool by any means. Um, and so if this is of interest to you, I encourage you to talk to an attorney or research it very carefully um, because it is not is not right for everyone. You, you can't name a contingent beneficiary, for example. So if I pass away, and God forbid Christina has already passed away, um, then there's essentially no beneficiary and it probably has to go through a probate process. Um, also, the beneficiary who inherits this way um, is, is kind of on the hook for your debts for up to three years. And so title companies, you can imagine, are kind of reluctant to sort of go through with a sale for that three-year period. So that can kind of restrict the beneficiary. But anyway, so that is a tool. And so we look and we see, did you have one of those deeds? And if you did, then the house at least would go to that beneficiary. Um, next, we're going to look and see if you owned any property in a trust. And if you did, your property is going to pass how you said it should in the trust. Um, and then what's left is a big bucket of everything else, okay? And everything else is what's eligible for probate. And there are some simplified probate procedures where if that everything else is less than um, $166,250, the number increases every couple of years. If it's less than that amount, then there's a very simplified process to help the, the, the people that you've designated, the people who are entitled to, to your assets to, to get access. Um, and if all of the assets are going to your spouse, there's a special procedure um, that's not a full-blown court case for your spouse to get access. But for everything that's left, um, you likely have to go, your, your loved ones rather, would likely have to go through the full court uh, probate process. Um, should, do you want me to tell you about probate or do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is absolutely, like that is very important. We absolutely want to know about probate, but what you just mentioned right now is very beneficial, right, yes, to your clients. Yes. So how, how would you, you know, mention them, like, you know, translating this in real quick in translating Spanish? Yeah. Like, um, so ahorita lo que estaba diciendo, Tony nos estaba diciendo, ¿qué es lo que pasa cuando no dejamos por decir un testamento este, um, y se van y están mirando las los este el patrimonio que tenemos verdad uh -huh. primero por ejemplo si es una casa van a mirar quién está en el título de la casa uh -huh. porque hay maneras pues precisamente en, en bienes raíces donde donde les donde cuando si fallece el esposo o la esposa inmediatamente la persona que sobrevive se pasa la este se, se convierte en el, en el dueño ya este solo de, de la casa este pero si 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 no está eso entonces cómo se va cómo se va a, a distribuir entonces ella va diciendo que va mirando los títulos o por ejemplo la 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 este la aseguranza de vida quién fue el beneficiario ahí van y lo distribuyen como 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 el como va diciendo el papel entonces ellos van mirando en los en los beneficiarios de cada cosa como están los títulos cómo se va a estar distribuyendo esto es como ella lo mencionó como un contrato entre tú y la institución por ejemplo si vas y en el banco tienes dinero ¿Quién dice ahí que es el beneficiario? Uh -huh. Entonces, allí tienes, como ella dijo, que a veces tienes que venir y traer el certificado de defunción de la persona este, para que se los den. En lo mismo en un plan de retiro. ¿Quién es el beneficiario? Entonces, eh, van viendo una cosa por uno. Entonces, ella dijo, ya lo demás que no tiene, por ejemplo, que no, no pusieron dueño, ellos van a, tienen reglas en la, en la corte de cómo se va a estar distribuyendo de, dependiendo de la cantidad y que a veces cada año va cambiando esta cantidad. Entonces, van a mirar todo. Entonces, así es como va haciendo el proceso. 
nuevamente ella mencionó que hay un nuevo título que están haciendo en las propiedades donde están viendo si, si, um, si yo puedo decir o si, si yo fallezco, a quién le pueden dar mi propiedad. Dice que no está todavía perfecto, pero que, um, que, es, un, que, que está, es, es, algo, es algo nuevo donde puedes decir, por ejemplo, que si yo fallezco, como ella dijo, de, puso por ejemplo a Cristina, <risa> le quiero dejar la casa a, 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 a Cristina, entonces a quién se las quieren dejar uh, como beneficiarios. Uh, pero ella va diciendo también que es un proceso nuevamente y, y puede ser un proceso largo si va también por corte. Pero las cosas, por ejemplo, lo que es de, del retiro de la casa, va mirando primero el título, que es importante que dijo ella va mirando el título um, y también en las cuentas de ahorros en las cuentas de de, de, um, de retiro y en los seguros de vida que todo ahí pueden poner quiénes son los beneficiarios y ellos nos van a estar repartiendo así entonces si ustedes no van y chequean cada cierto tiempo quién es se vaya a ese beneficiario que está en el documento como la última persona sí y, y habló también uh, ahorita comentó Diana del corte solo que estoy ahorita pensando porque esa es mi primera vez la verdad eh, um, hablando de este uh, tema en particular so, cuando yo oigo corte eso es probe y eso es algo sí. que los puede también explicar a uh, Tony que is probate so that i just uh, asked yeah. you right like so probate means going to court so if you can let us know what is probate and do we want to avoid it yes it's another one of those scary words in this field right and uh probate is simply a court process um it takes place in the section of the court system uh the section of the the county superior court called the probate court and the purpose of the probate court is essentially to to validate a deceased person's will if they had one to no make sure that their creditors are notified to supervise the process of the debts being paid to make sure the assets are valued appropriately and at the end of the day to affirm that the beneficiaries the, the right beneficiaries are going to get paid out. Um, and so to do this, there are petitions that have to be filed with the court. There are at least two hearings as part of the process. And there are um, voluminous amounts of material due to the court on a set schedule. Um, unless the assets are just all cash, the court is going to require some appraisals. Um, and some of the drawbacks are that, well, first, you don't get to go to court for free. So there are court costs built into this process and appraisal fees. Um, and all of that, that could be, you know, a couple thousand dollars even, and all of that comes off the top before beneficiaries inherit anything. Um, also, often people want to go through this process with an attorney. And the attorney's fees are actually set by statute. It's key, a formula that's key to the value of the assets. And so it could be several thousand dollars to tens of thousands of dollars of attorney's fees, again, off, off the top before the beneficiaries inherit. So one drawback is that probate is expensive. Um, another drawback is that it is, it is very time consuming. Um, a, a very quick probate case would take about nine months. Um, they often last more than a year, and now COVID has resulted in so many court delays that the timeline has been pushed back even further. So um, the process takes a long time, and, and that's hard because your beneficiaries do not get paid out until the end. So it could be this nine months, this year, this you know 16 months, until the beneficiaries actually get the distribution you wanted them to have, um, and it's going to be less all of the fees and you know the attorney costs and what have you of going through this process. Um, another drawback actually for people is that, you know, when you when you go to court and you file court documents, it's a matter of public record. And so somebody could go to the courthouse and, and request a copy of all the documents, which would include your will and various financial information about your assets and their value um, and potentially information about the family circumstances. And so a lot of people don't like the idea that their personal affairs could be public in that way after they're gone. Um, and, you know, honestly, an, another big drawback of probate is that it's a, a hassle, right? It's a lot of hurdles to jump through, even if you have the assistance of an attorney. And remember, people are 
are going through fate at a time when they've just lost someone that they loved. So they're grieving too. So it's, um, it's kind of what I think of as like the business part of death um, that can be really taxing for people who are, you know, trying their hardest just to just to move forward emotionally. Um, and so for all those reasons, it's often a goal of, of anybody doing estate planning to try to avoid their loved ones having to go through the probate process. Um, I honestly, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about um, probate being kind of something that you do for other people, or I'm sorry, not probate, but estate planning being something that you do for other people. And that resonates with me a lot because um, leaving aside any assets you might be passing on to your loved ones, I think having a plan in place is really a gift to them. Because if you don't have a plan in place and you say become incapacitated, the people who care about you are going to be scrambling to figure out how to get you the care that you need. Um, I've been in that situation myself. And if, if you don't have um, a power of attorney document, which names somebody to make financial decisions for you, or an advanced health care directive, which names somebody to name medical decisions for you, um, the people who want to support you are going to have to jump through a lot of hoops and express frustration and maybe expend a lot of their own funds trying to get you the care you need. And that could be so easily avoided. Wow. Okay. That is very important yeah. because, I mean, you know, we're, we're thinking about right now in terms of trust and, and, and avoiding probate when, say for example, because we know, you know, our audience and, and COVID has affected a lot of people in different ways. They either, you know, made more money or they lost um, jobs and are struggling financially. For folks, say, that are struggling financially, that have more debt, no assets, you know, nothing really to leave behind. I still think that estate planning is important because, you know, that person's life is of value, right? Maybe they don't have, you know, uh, money, you know, or any types of other benefits to leave behind, but, you know, it's their lives that are in value. So that um, uh, power of attorney that you mentioned, I'm sure people are still going to have checks, maybe some savings, something, right, that will need taken care of. But what what is the best advice for folks maybe on the other end of the spectrum that have more debt, you know, than any kind of assets? What happens then if that that person, if that individual does not have any, any estate planning or power of attorney or anything? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it depends on exactly... If, if there are any assets that could say be attached by creditors. Um, in some situations, debts are extinguished when you die. It, it also kind of depends on who who's left. Like if maybe there was property that was owned with a spouse. Um, the the general rule though is that um, you know creditors would need to be in if a probate process is warranted if they had enough assets to warrant a court process um, creditors are notified and then creditors have to step forward and claim whatever is due to them and then the person managing the probate estate um, the person essentially managing the assets of the deceased person, we'll call this person the personal representative, um, decides if they're going to accept or maybe contest and reject um, the amounts that the creditors say they're owed. And, you know, when the dust clears and the debts can be, you know, paid off, then kind of what's left is, is what would be distributed to the beneficiaries if there is anything left. Um, I think in the circumstance that you're talking about, though, I think um, that is that is pro the person you describe, the person who just sees debts, don't think of themselves as really having assets. That person is probably thinking estate planning is not for me. And so my message to that person is that it actually is. Um, at the very least, a power of attorney, I think, is a really important document for people to have. And again, this is a document where you name somebody who can make um, financial decisions for you if you can. And it doesn't need to be that you have so much money and you're making you know, in huge investment decisions. It can just be clearing up issues with your benefits, right? Or dealing with rent or you know, some, some mess up at the bank. And you're not in a position to handle that, but you want somebody who you trust to be able to. And so I think even, even in the circumstance you described where someone might even think that the financial picture is pretty bleak, I think um, a power of attorney can be really useful. And 
Switching gears a little bit, I think an advanced healthcare directive is an important document for everybody. Um, and that, remember, is a document where you can you can do two things. You can first name an agent who would make healthcare decisions for you if the time ever comes where you can't make those decisions for yourself. And, and the document also allows you to state your preferences and give instructions about the kind of care you want to receive. So, um, you know, organ donation or not, and um, life-sustaining treatment or not, right? I. I've had clients use these forms to even give funeral instructions. And, you know, there's this tendency to think that it is um, pessimistic, right? Or um, to talk about this and to do this. But I want to just say again that I, I really think doing this is kind of a gift for your loved ones because um, I talked about the confusion um, and the logistical hurdles that can ensue if you don't do this planning. Um, but particularly in the medical context, there's also a lot of guilt that happens, right? And a disagreements among family members because, you know, everybody wants to do what you would want but you didn't tell them, so they don't know. And they, they second guess themselves likely about if they're making the right decision. And so um, in that context too, I really think it's a gift to the people around you to make your wishes known. Lo que dijo ahorita, que es hacer esta planificación es un, pues es un regalo para nuestros seres queridos. Estamos, bueno, es, ¿qué es mejor de un regalo? Es, algo es que... un acto de amor, porque son los que Perfecto. ellos se quedan, como dijo Tony. Y, dice, y, y ella mencionó ahorita, este, que les vamos a dar puntos claves, ella mencionó que cuando no tenemos este testamento, no tenemos, este, uh, no hemos puesto a nuestros seres queridos que quisiéramos que se queden con nuestros bienes o a nuestras propiedades o lo que tengan ustedes este um, este cuando ya se va a corte porque se va a ir a corte si no hay nada se, es, es un proceso que que se va a ir a corte y puede durar mucho tiempo y las personas que este um, que les debemos como los deudores y todo eso mm -hmm. ellos están también pidiendo ahí su dinero entonces después lo, las personas que le dejamos las herencias, pónganle, ya, ellos van a ser los últimos que, que, que uh, reciban los beneficios. Y como dijo Tony, si queda algo, ella fue uh -huh. específica en decir, uh -huh. si lo que quieren, pues, pues ahí. Cristina le preguntó, dijo, oh, bueno, ¿y, ¿y qué pasa con las personas que tal vez no tienen muchos bienes y uh -huh. más bien tienen deudas? Sí, ten, ¿Tendrían que hacer esa planificación? Tony dijo, sí, porque en la parte de la planificación también dice allí, ¿Qué pasa conmigo si estoy descapacitada? ¿Qué pasa conmigo si tienen que hacer decisiones? Por ejemplo, estoy enferma en el hospital. Porque la, entonces esto crea mucho conflicto familiar porque cada quien quiere hacer lo que la persona supuestamente quería, pero si no dijiste nada, todos están como adivinando qué es lo que querías. Entonces también dice para las decisiones de médico, las decisiones de discapacidad, para que también puedan saber qué son nuestras voluntades. ¿Verdad? So, so no solamente es la parte financiera, pero ella dijo también la parte médica de nuestras otras decisiones personales, donde les podemos dar como se llama el power of attorney, que es como el poder sí. a las personas de hacer decisiones por nosotros. Y si no las hacemos, como dijo Tony, yo, eh, que ella tuvo esa experiencia y tal vez todos hemos tenido esa experiencia sí. o, o, o conocemos a alguien que tuvo que... este hacer pasos extras para ver cómo ayudar a la persona porque no dejó nada y a veces hasta hablar este nuestros nuestros información uh, de doctor a veces es muy privada este no nos quieren dar cierta información o cierta autoridad entonces la, ella dijo las personas si nos pasan algo o, o, o estemos discapacitados las personas que nos quieren van a estar con nosotros verdad entonces esas personas van a mirar todo este proceso estar frustrados tal vez mi, mirando todo lo que está pasando y y en cierta manera en ciertas áreas van a tener las las manos atadas porque nosotros no les dejamos eso a ellos para que pudieran hacer esas decisiones por nosotros. Entonces, sí. la planificación patrimonial no solamente es de la parte financiera, pero es la parte médica de nosotros, donde ella dijo es un acto de amor para las personas que quedan aquí. Sí, muy importante. Y thank you, Tony, porque también Tony compartió con nosotros unos uh, recursos, ¿verdad? En um, terms of uh, free resources. 
Um, Tony, thank you so much. You mentioned the Sacramento County Public Law Library has some great tools, and we will make sure to include that here on, on our presentation. There's also the uh, saclaw.org. Um, so there are definitely some really helpful resources. Uh, Tony, thank you so, so much for providing those. Any other resources that you can think of? I know you, um, you sent me something last, but that you want to point our audiences to. Sure. Well, first, if I may, I just want to um, add to the to this the hypothetical we were talking about, about the person who doesn't really feel like they have assets and what should they do. Um, I want to add in, too, that a, a will is also a really good idea for that person, um, because particularly if you have a child, there's the naming the guardian. And um, if there is anything left after the debts are paid, that person probably wants to be in a position of deciding who would get it. And so um, I think some of these tools are really important to have in place even if you think um, that, that you're not going to have much to leave. Um, and in terms of free resources, there, there are some that can be really helpful. Um, California has a California Uniform Statutory Power of Attorney. So it's, it's built into the probate code. It's a form of a, stat, uh, of a power of attorney that you can use. Um, it's a pretty simplified form, and it's set up to take effect, to give somebody power um, immediately, which a person may or may not want. Often, um, often power of attorneys that are drafted by attorneys um, for people who are not, you know, terminally ill or having any kind of, you know, capacity concerns now will say that the, the person being authorized, that person's called the attorney, in fact, will be able to, to assume that authority only if, say, two doctors certify that the, the person is um, incapacitated. And so if you decide to use that California uniform statutory form, just think about when you want it to take effect and make whatever adjustments you might need to if you want it to take effect only in the event of incapacity. Um, another tool is there is a, um, a California statutory advanced health care directive. And um, I did, you, you will get posted um, some resources for how you can um, access copies of that. I know that um, I've seen some forms even available that are bilingual. So it will have Spanish, but then the English translation right underneath, which is helpful. Um, because you don't, you know, this form is going to be read potentially in an emergency situation in sort of a hospital and you don't want to, you know, you don't want anybody to have to wait for the translator to understand what you're asking for. So, um, and then the third is there is a California statutory form will, and it's essentially a fill in the blank will. Again, it's written right into the California probate code. Um, and if you just Google California statutory will, you'll get some examples of how you can fill it in. Um, it's not perfect for everybody because it's very, it's got very limited choices and you can't, you can't change the choices. So you can't add in your own ideas or change the numbers around. Um, and so if it works for you, it is a pretty easy and free way to, to have a will, um, but make sure that you read the instructions very carefully and um, be sure that it actually does work for you. I know that the instructions are actually also strictly followed. So for example, there's some places where you might write in a name, but you also have to sign next to it. And so if you only write in the name, but don't sign, there's a question as to whether it's valid. So be really sure to check the instructions, but that's one more um, free resource that could be helpful. That's so great. That's so great. That is really good. Um, th those resources. And then, so once you fill those out, you file it with, um, the same place that you access the forms, you're able to file it there as well, or do you have to go to a specific court? Yeah, so you, you actually don't file these these documents. So the the power of attorney you would sign. It has to. You have to again check the instructions. Um, a power of attorney document can be notarized, or if you don't notarize it, you have to have it signed by two witnesses. Um, and so you just want to read the instructions to make sure you know the requirements for for witnessing the signature. Um, and that's a document that you hold on to. And I would suggest giving a copy to the person you name as your attorney, in fact, so that God forbid the time ever comes where you can't manage your affairs that person is ready to, to step in and act for you and, and do what needs to be done. Um, and then the advanced healthcare directive, um, you don't file it anywhere, um, except that it's a really good idea to give a copy to your um, primary care physician, um, who will hopefully make it a part of your medical record. And again, whoever you've named as your agent, it's a good idea to give them a copy too, so that 
you know, God forbid the time comes, they can step forward and show it as proof that they have the decision-making authority. Um, and then finally, with a will, you don't file that anywhere either, but you do want to hold on to the original copy of your will, because if one day um, your assets have to go through the probate process, the court has a, a strong preference. The court really wants to see the original will, the actual document that you sign, not just a copy. So, you know, you keep it in a safe place where you keep your other important papers. And um, it's a good idea with all of this to let, you know, in your will, you're going to name someone called the executor, who is the person that you're trusting to kind of manage, um, you know, gathering your assets and ultimately paying your debts and distributing the assets to your beneficiaries. And um, it's a good idea to let that person know where it is that you keep your important papers, because that's the person who may one day need to find them. That's so awesome. important. And we, and to, agradezco mucho a Tony. I'm so grateful for all of this information. And so to wrap wrap up, right, with those three main points of resources, um, I'm, I'm sure, have, have you heard of those resources before? Have you, have you been able to share those with your participants? Or is this something that, you know, as a financial coach, you're also um, looking forward to? Uh, so I think resources. usually I do it for clients to lawyers because I feel like it's the law. But now knowing now knowing this information, Tony, I think it's really helpful to know. Hey, there's other free resources that they're able to 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 obtain without you know if if a low cost or no cost. Um, so ahorita lo que estaba diciendo Tony nos estaba nos vamos a tener los recursos allí. Mm -hmm. uh, pero básicamente ya estaba diciendo donde uh, nos estaba dando el website de donde tienen los recursos como para por ejemplo, si queremos este, um, este, decisiones, por ejemplo, del doctor, de, directivas, eh, el poder que le decimos el power of attorney, que alguien pueda des hacer decisiones cuando estamos discapacitados y, y un testamento que dijo, pero dijo que era, eran breves, eran breves, o sea, son, son un poco más simples, no es usualmente como el que van y, 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 y van por un abogado donde se los hacen, pero esa, están ahí gratis en él y les vamos a tener la información en los recursos pero básicamente um, ella estaba diciendo que no, no, es, no lo quedamos nosotros si le podemos dar a la persona que por ejemplo le estamos dando el poder si va a ser como un testamento la otra de la directiva de información como de médica le podemos dar una copia a nuestro um, a nuestro doctor para 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 nuestros records y este y este y, y la del poder también nuevamente la llenan que a quién le están dando el poder si 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 lo ocupan y ustedes se quedan copias y si te, y le pueden dar la copia a la persona que que le están autorizando que que pueda tener esta esta decisión por ustedes también sí. y para terminar quiero de, comentar verdad para nuestra comunidad a uh, es, yo sé que es muy difícil hablar de, de nuestros días, es que, sí. que a todos los, los va a pasar y sabemos sí. que you know, ahora tenemos COVID y que eso es un riesgo, especialmente para nuestra comunidad latina, ¿verdad? Y pues yo digo la verdad, mire, yo, yo personalmente, Diana y Tony, yo personalmente te, tengo un um, pienso, creo, que espiritualmente seguimos y bueno, si yo puedo o escuchar a mis seres queridos hablar de mí, no quiero que, no quiero que estén frustrados porque no, no pueden encontrar algo, ¿verdad? No sí, pueden a, ayudar. ayudarme, ¿verdad? Si, de, you know, si, si algo pasa, eso yo digo, um, para que todos estén más tranquilos, más en paz, el planificamiento, sí. estar preparados, es muy importante, es un acto de amor para nuestros seres queridos. Y yo, la verdad, les comento ahorita y les voy a hacer sinceramente, ahorita que me los explicó Tony, que um, lo, aprendí mucho de Tony, eh, ahora sí me voy a dedicar también a estar preparada sí. <ríe> y dejarle sí. a mi hijo <ríe> todo lo que Tony me recomendó, porque sí, la verdad, es muy, muy importante, ¿verdad? A veces los descuidamos porque pensamos, estamos jóvenes, uh -huh. estamos con salud, pero no. So thank you so much. I just finished explaining, Tony, how, you know, if anything, you know, this is so important because at the end of the day, you know, it is an act of love, as you mentioned, for our loved ones. And today I learned so much from you that I'm making a commitment to get my power of attorney, to get things in place because, you know, I, I have a son and I want him to be okay. God forbid something happens, you know, something's out, you know, I want him to be, be in peace. And going through that grieving process is so difficult, but having to then add 
on to that is is so the process is so difficult. So because of you, Tony, I feel so much more inclined to also be super ready and us to you know to take these things for granted. And you help to demystify a lot of things for me personally. And just really knowing Tony, like just emphasizing on it's not just about the asset. You know, tra- transfer of assets, but it's a lot of, about decisions where we still, you know, if something happens, accidents happen and, and knowing that, hey, who, who made the decisions? Well, I get, you know, well, I recover from this, right? Because people kind of make this assumption, like you say, hey, you know, if I have like, I have to have this big house or this big mansion, I don't even have to worry about this and just kind of having the correct information and knowing like, no, that's not it. There's so much more interesting planning than, you know, you know, the transfer of, of, of assets. To, to our loved ones. Absolutely. And to wrap up, it, it is a, um, a very in-depth uh, sub- subject and, and themes. And we would love to have you back again. Maybe we can cover one thing of how to maybe prepare <laughs> one particular thing, you know? And, and you know, because it is. I think it, our community, you know, our communities will benefit so much of, of a continued conversation, mm-hmm. right? And so we'd love to have you back on again, Tony, at some point, uh, whenever, you know, you're available. <laughs> but we we, we, we appreciate you so so very much thank you so much Tony we really appreciate we learn even for ourselves we always learn something like okay you know like and just to have these conversations with our loved ones and friends and family and it's, just, it's a hard topic but I think it's nice to kind of throw it there in different ways I guess <laughs> but because it is it is important for us you know like you say like at the end of the day the person who loves you will be there struggling because we were not ready you know we, we did not leave. so it's just kind of having that pers- perspective and seeing that hey someone that loves you is going to be there no matter what and they're going to have to go through this hassle it just kind of really makes us think about it right in general like you know what will you want your loved ones to go through like just the grief and then on top of this the whole process yeah and i just thought you know i have my little cat willie <laughs> like i i have to make sure that he's well taken really? care of. <laughs> really he's my most most <laughs> precious possession <laughs> No, Will, yeah, Willie needs to be taken care of. Um, well, thank you. Thank you both for, for having me. It was my pleasure to be with you. Um, I want to remind your viewers that it's, you know, I, it's always my recommendation to talk to an attorney because um, you might have a particular circumstance that you don't realize creates a special, you know, a special situation for you in the estate planning world. But if you told that to an attorney, they would know right away that, you know, something isn't a good choice for you or is a much better choice for you. So um, I highly recommend that you talk to an attorney, even even an initial consultation to help you sort through the various options. Um, And, you know, one thing that might make this a little bit less scary, too, is for people to remember that they can they can amend these documents, they can revoke them, they can change them. So it's if you have a power of attorney, you can revoke it at any time, right? And same with your advanced health care directive, you know, a will, a trust, you, it's not set in stone forever. So you can make updates. um, And you can and you can revoke it. And so hopefully that makes it seem a little bit less scary. Right. A, a less permanent. And, and speaking of attorneys, Tony, you're an attorney yourself. How can, um, are, are you available? Can people um, contact you? Let us, let us know of your availability. Yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to field any questions your viewers have. So um, please, anyone can feel free to call me if they have more questions. That's fantastic. fantastic. And are you available to, uh, to, uh, for clients and new clients? Absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. And we'll make sure to put all your contact information as well here as people are viewing this so they can know. And and again, we'll love to have, we would love to have you back on the show. Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us for another uh, session of Bilingual Finance Fridays. Esperamos que aprendieron mucho hoy día. Muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros otra vez. Sí, y vamos a tener toda la información de Tony para si ustedes tienen preguntas. Si recuerden, ella siempre dijo es un acto de amor dejar nuestra planificación preparada para nuestra uh, para nuestras familias, ¿verdad? Sí. Y entonces muchas gracias por estar aquí y espero les haya gustado este tema, que es un tema un poco sensible, pero como Tony dijo, es algo que no es algo este que 
que tiene que estar, se puede cambiar la planificación, si te queremos cambiar algo, si no es algo, nosotros podemos cambiar la mientras que estemos aquí en este mundo, ¿verdad? <risa> y sí. muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotras, con sí. Cristina, conmigo y con Tony. Y con Tony, muchas gracias, que pasen un buen día. Thank Adiós. you so much, everyone. Bye.